Hello and welcome to this video, uh, in which we will be taking a look at the Norwegian M66 uh, ankle boots, combat boots, field boots, whatever you want to call them. Uh, talking a little bit about the history, how they are worn, how they are in use, and so on. Uh, and basically, starting right off, uh, as the name suggests, these were adopted in 1966, uh, and they replaced the earlier um, so called uh, Ian Stövel or directly translated uh, unit boots, uh, which uh, it doesn't really translate very well, but they are sort of similar in that they are black uh, ankle boots. Uh, I don't have any pictures to show you, but I do have a graphic uh, or a drawing from a uh, authentic uh, manual that I'll show you. Um, but uh, basically those had uh, leather soles and iron fittings on the toe and on the heel plate. They did not have uh, hobnails, uh, and basically they had a bit more of a squared off toe, uh, which uh, was very similar to the pre-war uh, boots worn by the Norwegian military. Um, and basically it, it, it makes it easier to, uh, when you put on skis, to have a square toe. Uh, but I won't get too much into that now. Uh, and basically the and the, these were the first uh, rubber sole boots in use by Norway, um, uh, at least on a uh, large scale for field boots, that is. Um, and uh, of course, there are rubber sole boots are pretty much better in almost every way. Uh, they are more durable, they are more, uh, uh, they are lighter, they are easy, easier to maintain, uh, they are more durable. Don't know if I mentioned that already. Uh, and of course, uh, they give you better grip uh, on more surfaces, and they also make less sound when you are uh, walking down the street on hard surfaces, for example, uh, which is a good thing if you don't want to be heard from several kilometers away. So these were pretty much uh, very good for the, the day. Uh, but uh, about 11 years later, the a newer type of boot, uh, was designed called the M77s, uh, which we have right here. Uh, and these are, in my opinion, way better than these. Okay, so just a short uh, intermission here to say that I forgot to mention that the M66 boots are made of way thicker leather, uh, and I also suspect that they have a metal plate in their heel because they when you're walking with them, they feel uh, much heavier than the M77s, um, which uh, as a result, uh, even though the M77s are, uh, look bigger, they feel lighter. Uh, now back to the video. Uh, I do have a separate video on uh, these, if you want to take a look. Uh, but uh, basically, these would have been worn with anklets, which I'm going to show you pretty soon. Uh, and the, uh, these were a lot more of a hassle to deal with, but not really, I wouldn't really call it a hassle, but these are way better. Uh, of course, you have the hooks on the top here that makes it much uh, quicker to lace on uh, in a hurry. Uh, with these, uh, especially when you're wearing these with anklets, uh, they will take uh, quite uh, some time or more time to put on uh, if you're in a hurry, uh, which is, of course, a consideration for uh, armies. So, uh, well, let's uh, get uh, rid of these because this is not what the video is about. Um, so, a little bit more about history. These, um, despite the M77s uh, coming just 11 years later, uh, these served well into the 90s with some units. Uh, really, by the mid to late uh, 80s, uh, these were replaced in most. Uh, most units, however, the Home Guard continue to use these well into the 90s with anklets. So, uh, quite long lived, and they, uh, even after they got the M77s in, they continue to produce these uh, reportedly. Uh, some have seen them being produced with dates in the 80s, uh, but I can't really confirm that, so I haven't really seen any uh, stampings to suggest that. But uh, these, uh, these boots uh, could be worn in the field, and they were also uh, worn with uh, uh, what's commonly called uh, Padm uniform in Norwegian, basically, which uh, 
in which uh, conscripts wouldn't get a service uh, uniform, but they would get a uh, battle dress type uniform that was made from the same material as a service uniform and used in the same roles, but for uh, conscripts. Um, in which would you, you would use uh, these with anklets. Uh, of course, they had, did have low boots uh, as well, or low shoes, if you will. Uh, I don't remember right off on the top of my head uh, when they, the different types of shoes would have been worn, but uh, that's uh, these were worn with both dress uniform and field uniform, so to speak, and also working uniform. Um, and these would have been worn with first with uh, M51 field uniforms and then with M75 field uniforms for a few years. Uh, this is the second type of anklets worn with this. The first one were very similar in construction, but they have uh, kind of a greyish uh, leather tabs instead of these nylon tabs. And they did have leather reinforcements running along the bottom. Uh, and these second pattern ones have hooks for hooking onto the lacing, uh, which makes them that means that they don't ride up. Uh, which is quite handy, of course. Uh, and these are um, have a very not so great uh, reputation among uh, veterans uh, <laughs> who uh, use these. Uh, also, they have a cutout at the front, so do you have a little bit of movement there, so you don't press the material up and just punch it up at the front. So these were also used by pretty much every branch of the Norwegian military and also by the civil defense, as far as I understand it. Um, I can't really confirm that, uh, but uh, that's what I've heard. Uh, and uh, just as a final uh, thing on this before we take a closer look at them. These have a bit of a reputation of destroying people's feet. Uh, uh, we're going to take a closer look at why that uh, that is the case, but uh, um, I've used these uh, quite a lot uh, during winter, and they're not the best boots I have, uh, but they do work uh, uh, quite well. Uh, I've had them for like four years now, but uh, among veterans, they uh, of course some like them, and but many dislike them. I think the uh, those who dislike them are, are probably more. Uh, vocal on that uh, front, so uh, but that's pretty much the nature of every piece of equipment worn by uh, militaries. Some will hate them and some will love them. And with that being said, let's take a closer look. So, starting up at the front of the boot, we have a almost smooth toe, uh, which is made for uh, ease of polish. Uh, of course, in the army, you would polish these quite uh, often, uh, and the the toe is quite hard, and that's one of the reasons why these can destroy your feet. Uh, particularly if you have long toes uh, like me, uh, if the toe is touching the wall, it's going to uh, not be so good for your toes uh, in the slightest. Uh, I learned that the hard way. So, uh, um, moving on, uh, the, as we pointed out, the way the layers meet here. So, uh, moving back, we have solid heel cap, that's what you call it, uh, which is also pretty hard, and one of the reasons why it will kind of destroy your feet uh, if you're not prepared. These take quite a long time to break in, and nothing really special on the other side. Uh, we have... Um, eyelets here, which are made of brass that are either painted or oxidized, I'm not really sure. Um, the laces are made from a cotton material, which are quite uh, sturdy actually. These uh, will hold out for a long time. Uh, as you can see, they're sewn in a piece of reinforcing leather, so the eyelets don't just pop out uh, or stretch too much. And if we take a look at the inside of the boot, we have just a fairly normal leather midsole. Uh, these are meant to be worn with a uh, very primitive uh, leather insole, but uh, for me, despite these being a bit 
oversized to be worn with thick uh, wool socks. Um, I can't really wear these with insoles uh, and the thick socks at the same time. Uh, uh, it just becomes too tight in there for some reason. So they can be quite rough on your heel uh, when you're walking. Uh, uh, and speaking of the heel, let's go down to the bottom. Uh, of course, starting here we have a groove for ski bindings. Uh, of course, uh, skiing is pretty uh, common in Norway and uh, an army on skis moves pretty quickly and silently as well. So uh, skis are king in winter warfare. Um, we have, looking at the bottom here, we have a tread pattern that is uh, actually quite soft, uh, even though these are a bit worn down, uh, they're still a bit soft, they aren't as grippy as some later designs. Um, so these will work uh, well on uh, most surfaces, but uh, a bit slippery surfaces, they don't really work well at all. Uh, so that's a warning to any of you who might want to get one of these for actual use. And we also have a marking here. We have the standard shield, which is a properly marked for the Norwegian military. 73, that's the year of production, 1973. Um, I forgot to mention these are made by Alpha uh, Shoe Factory in Norway. We also have a size working 45 and middles, uh, which means medium in Norwegian. And I'm not entirely sure what that refers to. Um, I think most likely it refers to shoe accessories that you would have to these uh, because when you're wearing these with skis you would have kind of a toe cap here and a pair of um, snow gaiters if you will uh, here that would be of course at different sizes and uh, maybe that's what it refers to so it's easier to pick out when you're at the depot or something but uh, not entirely sure so uh, these uh, these boots are quite common today. They made quite a lot of them, and uh, uh, a lot of them have been bought up in the last 10, 15 years or so by surplus uh, dealers. Uh, and uh, famously, these have made their way into some film productions, especially World War II film production, where these would not be uh, authentic at all, but. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that authentic uh, World War II era uh, boots, especially Norwegian field boots, uh, are difficult to come by and you don't necessarily want to destroy a pair of originals in a film production if you can avoid it. Well, basically in, in films and TV you are most of the time not focusing on boots, so uh, to me that's a excusable uh, sacrifice. Uh, they are black and they are they don't draw too much attention to themselves so uh, i can understand that from a certain perspective so that's uh, pretty much it for this uh, video uh thank you to everyone who held out so long and uh, as always if you have any questions or comments or anything then leave them down below and i'll be more than happy to answer them uh, until next time goodbye